Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. My name is Chen Chen Tan. This presentation is prepared as a pre-recorded video for EuroCrypt 2021. The title of this talk is A Deeper Look at Machine Learning Based Crypto Analysis. This is a joint work with Adrian Benamira, David Gerard, Thomas Payen, and myself. I will be presenting for the first half and Adrian will be presenting for the next half. This talk is divided into three main parts. The first part will be the preliminaries, where we will talk about the background work required to understand this presentation. In particular, a previous work in Crypto19 by Aaron Gore. The next part, we will explore the intuition of Gore's neural distinguishers from a cryptanalysis perspective. Lastly, we will focus on how we can mix a machine learning pipeline and traditional cryptanalysis to replace the neural distinguishers. This is the wrong function of the SPEC cipher. SPEC is an ARX cipher and has a Feister-like structure. The S functions over here represents the bitwise rotations. Alpha and betas are parameters that changes depending on the block size. The block plus over here represents the modulo addition by 2 to the power of n. And since for the sake of this presentation, we are only focusing on the smallest cipher in the spec family, we will fix the block size to be 32 and therefore the alpha and beta to be 7 and 2. Note that for spec cipher, the DDT is usually too large to be constructed. One alternative would be to approximate a DDT experimentally by keeping the higher probable differences only. In Crypto 2019, Aaron Gore published a paper called Improving Attacks on Wrong Reduced Spec 32 Using Deep Learning. We will summarize the main points that are relevant to this presentation. Firstly, Gore created a neural network architecture and trained them to be neural distinguishers for reduced rounds of spec. Essentially, the aim of the neural distinguisher is to distinguish ciphertext that come from plain text pairs with a fixed input difference, as opposed to those that come from a random input difference. Gore did a comparison with his pure differential distinguishers, which are actually large, large DDTs that spans for n rounds. The neural distinguishers did a better job for all 5 to 8 rounds. One notable result that Gore has is that he improved significantly the time complexity of the 11 round key recovery attack compared to the previous pairs formed by Dino in SEC 2014. This is the structure of Gore's neural distinguisher. The input to the distinguisher is a pair of ciphertexts encoded in binary. It passes through multiple convoluted blocks before moving on to the prediction head and eventually outputting a single value in between 0 and 1. This is also the score that the neural distinguisher is giving the ciphertext pair. If the score is more than or equals to 0 0.5, it will be considered as real or comes from the fixed input difference. Otherwise, it's considered as random. These are the results of Gore's pure differential distinguishers PDD and neural distinguishers ND. You can see that for each round, the NDs are actually performing better than the PDDs. Now we move on to the next part. In this part, we aim to explore two questions. The first would be what type of cryptanalysis is Gauss neural distinguishers learning? And the second, can we actually replicate the results without using the neural network? but using techniques that crypt analysts are more familiar with. To answer the first question, we have to conduct multiple experiments in an attempt to reverse engineer what the neural distinguishers are looking out for. For the ciphertext pairs Gore used to train the neural distinguishers, they come from plain text pairs with this particular input difference, having just a single active bit on the left part. Well, this is the best input difference for differential characteristics for 3 and 4 rounds of the spec round function. It is not for the case of 5 rounds. For 5 rounds, the best differential characteristic starts from this particular input difference. As a first try, we retrain Gore's neural distinguisher using this particular input difference. The accuracy was around 76%. 
compared to 93% in the five round case. This is actually quite counterintuitive as we will expect the best differential characteristic will yield the same if not better results. The next experiment we did was to ensure a fair play between the pure differential distinguishers and neural distinguishers. That is, since a DDT only assessed the difference and nothing else, then the neural distinguisher should only have access to the difference only as well. Therefore, we retrain the neural distinguisher with just the difference instead of the entire ciphertext pair. The accuracy in this case fell by a few percentages. This means that while the bulk of the cases may be explained by the output difference distribution, some of them have to be explained in some other manner. With that, we decided to do some sort of reverse engineering based on the scores that the neural distinguisher is giving. In this case, we want to know if a strong difference would mean everything to the di neural distinguisher. In this case, we will send multiple ciphertext pairs into a neural distinguisher, and then we partition them based on the scores. In particular, we will focus on the ones that have a very high score, as well as the ones that are very low score, into the buckets G and B. Next, we compute the difference for each ciphertext and then we record down the top 1000 common differences. For each of this difference, we will again create a set of 1000 random pairs with this particular difference and we put into the set DI. Then, for every one of them, we send them through the neural distinction once again. Essentially, at the very last phase, we are sending a total of 1 million random pairs that come from 1,000 unique differences. Here are the results for the experiment. For each given difference, that is if you look into each DI, about 3 quarter of the ciphertext pairs have a score that is more than 0 0.5. However, we also do note that there are some exceptions that only have about 38% having a score that is more than 0 0.5. Intuitively, we will be expecting a decreasing percentage trend as we go from the most common difference to the least common difference. However, this is not the case that we observe. Therefore, we cannot really say that if a difference is more probable, then the new distinguisher is more likely to recognize it. Next, we repeat the experiment with some changes. The changes are also highlighted in red over here. Basically, before we compute the difference, we first decrypt it by two rounds using the actual key. Then we rank and split them into sets based on their difference once again. Lastly, we encrypt it for two more rounds with another random key before we actually send them for evaluation. We also did another one except that we only decrypt by one round over here and therefore we encrypt one round over here as well. In both experiments that we decrypt by one or two rounds, we notice that almost all of the pairs have a score that is more than 0 0.5. And if we compare the true positive rates in both experiments, the, the experiment that we decrypt by two rounds matches more similar to the, that of the neural distinguishers. Therefore, we decide to venture further into it. Now, we would like to find if there's any biases at this particular line over here which is the difference after we decrypt by two rounds. After evaluating the biases of those ciphertext pairs in G and B respectively, this is the plot that we have. We can see that there are really some bit positions that are really biased for the ciphertext pairs in G when we compare to the ones in B. We locate the, the positions that the G is the most biased and we form this particular truncated differential that we call TD3. This TD3 can also be explained when we trace the biases starting from round zero difference all the way until the end of round three, as shown over here. The big positions that the TD3 fixes have a lower probability of having a carry propagated to them. With that, make our first assumption that the neural network has the ability to determine the difference of certain bits at round 3 and round 4 with very high accuracy. And we make our conjecture that 
the five rounds neural distinguisher is actually detecting TD3 instead. To verify our assumption one, we retrain the neural distinguishers with ciphertext pairs that actually satisfy TD3. And we obtain an accuracy of 96.57%. And in terms of the true positive rates, it's almost 100%. Based on what we have learned about what the neural distinguisher is detecting, we present our distinguisher that tests for similar properties with the neural distinguishers. We present the average key rank distinguisher. In this distinguisher, we use a DDT. However, we require the DDT to be at n minus one round for a n round distinguisher. And also, we only need some of the positions based on this particular mask itself. Therefore, it's actually really a mass DT instead. Also, note that this DT is really generated using a data set of 10 to the power of 7. The idea of the distinguisher is first we decrypt the last round using all possible subkeys. Note that this all possible subkeys is actually less than the power of 16 because we are only interested in some bit positions. And the bit positions will be given by the mass over here. In this particular case that we have, we are only requiring to the power of 12 different subkeys. After we have decrypt using the last round subkey, we look up the difference at this red line over here. Then we find out the probability of this red line using the mass DT that we have previously prepared. For each ciphertext pair, we compute the average probability of the differences over here. If the average probability is actually higher than that of a uniform distribution, we say that the ciphertext pair comes from a real distribution. Note that the real distribution indicates that a ciphertext pair comes from a plain text pair whose input difference is the fixed input difference that we require. Otherwise, we say that the ciphertext pair comes from a random distribution, which means that the ciphertext pair comes from plain text whose input difference is basically just random. There are actually several considerations we take into account when we crafting our average key rank distinguisher. Firstly, we want to use the same amount of data set as Gauss Neural Network. So the Gauss Neural Distinguisher took 10 to the power of 7 ciphertext pair in order to train it. And that is why in our preparation for our mass DT, we also use 10 to the power of 7. Next, we would like to match the neural distinguisher's time complexity. In the case for the neural distinguisher, the, the deep neural network essentially takes up to the power of 17 multi multiplications. For ours, we will have to take up to the power of 13 one round decryption for the spec round function with a total of to the power of 13 table lookups to the mass DT. These are the results of the average key rank distinguisher with the neural distinguisher from 5 to 7 rounds. In all the cases, we actually have the results that are better than neural distinguishers. Another interesting thing would be this degree of closeness to see how well both distinguishers actually agree with each other. And if you look at the diagonals, they made up almost 98% of the results. Now, we can go back to answering our main questions. Can we actually replicate the results? Yes, the degree of closeness between the two distinguishers is extremely close, which convinces us that they are actually testing for very similar properties. As for what type of cryptanalysis is the neural distinguisher is learning, we are expecting something along the lines of differential linear. However, unlike traditional cryptanalysis, which relies on independencies among characteristics, the neural distinguisher is able to take all of them and all of the co correlations into considerations. For the next part, Adrian will be taking over. Welcome in the second part of the presentation in which we will focus on exploring the neural distinguisher from a machine learning perspective. Now, in this part, we aim to explore two questions. The first one is, can Gauss Neural Distinguisher be replaced by a strategy inspired by both differential crypto analysis and machine learning? The second one is, can this new strategy be applied to more rounds or to another cipher? 
To answer this question, we need first to analyze the neural distinguisher architecture. It is composed of three blocks. The first one, here, takes as input the two ciphertexts C0 and C1. As the first block is a one-layer CNN, conventional, convolutional neural networks with kernel size 1, we suppose that it just do an input transformation that we need to characterize. The second block is composed of 10 sub-blocks. Each of the sub-blocks is composed of a two layers CNN with kernel size 3. This part is the hardest to explain. At the end, we have a vector f, which is the features vector, and each element of these feature vectors is a highly nonlinear function of the new input. Finally, the last block takes as input the features f and outputs a score of the neural distinguisher. It is composed of two dense layers, also called MLP for multi-layer perceptron. Our objective here is to replace each of these individual blocks by a more interpretable one coming either from machine learning or, for, or from the crypto analysis point of view. So we are going to start by block 1 and block 3. So the block 3 can be replaced by any other ensemble classifier. For example, the MLP block can be replaced by random forest or gradient boosting. The first block actually can be replaced by a linear combination of the input. We choose to fix our choice on delta L, delta V, V0 and V1 and the definition is given above. You can formally prove this transformation by establishing the truth table of the first layer and therefore exhibit the linear input transformation. What we have done so far, so we managed to replace the first block by the linear input transformation and the third block can be any ensemble machine learning classifier. That's why we call this pipeline a machine learning pipeline. Now our objective is to approximate the highly nonlinear vector f with a crypto analysis point of view. We are going to take the time to explain how we managed to replace the block 2. The first interesting experiment that we have already seen is that if the input of the neural, dita neural distinguisher is C0, C1, the difference between C0 and C1, like for the PDT, the model, the neural distinguisher, performs like the PDD. Therefore, our first as assumption is that the block 2 is able to do an approximation of the DDT, but with different input. Instead of having the difference between C0 and C1, it takes delta L, delta V, V0 and V1. But there is a limit, of course. Uh, because the new entry is 64 bits and there are 10 to the power 7 samples, it's not tractable. Moreover, the null distinguisher actually is pretty small, only 100k parameters. Therefore, we think that the null distinguisher is able to compress the ODT. So now let's consider a mask, M, with having weight HW. And now, Instead of taking the full input delta L, delta V, V0 and V1, we apply the mask on the input and then we compute the ODT on this input mask. And we get the probability of having real knowing the input. The limit of the second exception is that if we consider only one mask, of course we have only one probability at the end, but the vector of features f that we need to that we want to approximate has more than only one parameters. Therefore, we need to consider m mask. 
and then we have f tilt and f tilt is actually a pretty good approximation for f Uh, how we get that mask? Actually, we managed to extract it from the neural distinguisher with different deep learning techniques, interpretability deep learning techniques, such, such as, for example, the shape of values. Therefore, we are able now to propose the final conjectures. So, how we can replace the block 2, which are the blocks between 2.1 and 2.10. Uh, we need to compute the distribution table for the input delta L, delta V, V0 and V1 and we need to find several relevant masks in order to apply this mask over the inputs. Then we can compute MODT. We successfully tried this conjecture and it works. So finally what we have is we have seen that the block 1 is simply doing a linear transformation over the input. The block 3 is simply um, classification, actually a non-linear classification. And we can replace the 10 layers in the middle, actually the 20 layers of CNN in the middle by the MODT. We reach our objective to replace if these individual blocks by a more interpretable one coming either from machine learning for the block 3 or crypto analysis point of view block 1. Now let's replace the blocks step by steps and observe the evolution of the accuracy. Here is the summary table for 5 round spec. Here you can see the accuracy for the neural distinguisher and here for the PDD. So if we replace block 3, so the MAP by random forest, we lose 0.5% and we are still higher than PDD. If we replace block 1 by the linear combination, we lose 0.3% and we are very close to the neural distinguisher accuracy. And if we replace block 1 and block 2 by MODT, actually we get 92.3% and actually 92.3% is the accuracy of the overall pipeline. So MODT is when you, you replace every block by our hypothesis. Here um, you can see a comparison with no distinguisher 5 rounds and PDD 5 rounds for spec again. And you can see that we are very close from the neural distinguisher and much higher than the PDD. Uh, the table 3, we are now comparing the matching of the results between the neural distinguisher and MODT. That means that if you have an input on how many samples do we have exactly the same um, prediction. So we have the same prediction for 75.5% which is actually pretty high. Other results? So you can see in the paper that we manage also to extend our pipeline to 6 round spec and also we manage to extrapolate it to 8 round Simon. Discussion. Now we can answer our first um, question. Can Gauss neural distinguisher be replaced by a strategy inspired by both differential cryptoanalysis and machine learning? Practically, I would say almost, our pipeline yields performances very close to those of the neural distinguisher proposed by Core. And um, can this new strategy be applied to more rounds or to another cipher? We have shown that our pipeline generalizes from five to six round spec and that it can be applied to eight round Simon. Thank you very much for your attention.